up, everybody? My name is Scott Waters. Welcome to Left to Metal. I'm going to be doing a what's spinning. Haven't done one in a while. But uh, what I have is a requested video. This is uh, I've had several requested videos, and I've been doing so many no left to metal videos and update videos. I just haven't done one of these in a while. Um, so I wanted to do this, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to show some picture discs. And um, actually, I have a uh, more pictures than I thought I did. Um, I don't purposely collect picture discs. I don't dislike them like a lot of people seem to. Um, I think they're kind of cool. And, um, I think modern ones sound pretty good as well. But uh, I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just going to show you some stuff. And when I start looking through my discs, Sorry to be out of the camera here, but I put them on the floor. <laughs> oh, and I can't reach them. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I just started going through my collection looking for pictures. Some of them, you know, I remember what I had. Some of them I was like, um, just dig enough. Oh, I forgot about this one. Oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, and then, then I realized I had a whole lot more than I could, you know, show in one video. Um, but uh, before that, I'm a little thirsty. A little ode to my good friend, um, metal theologian, Aaron. Uh, I got the, uh, let's see, Boots Beverages, delicious and refreshing coconut cream soda. I'm a huge fan of coconut water, coconut pie, coconut anything. I just love coconut. So I was in the store and I thought I'd give it a shot. I don't drink a whole lot of soda myself, but uh, couldn't resist it. And whenever I see odd soda bottles in stores or something like that. I'm always taking pictures and sending them off to Aaron. So um, I decided to give this one a shot to see what I thought. So uh, this is made in Texas. Um, and it is um, the, the ingredients, carbonated water, sugar, and natural flavors. If that seems to be the, what it's mostly made of. Why don't they just say coconut flavoring? What is natural flavors? Anyhow. Um, yeah. Boots. So let's give this a shot. It's actually pretty good. It's not overwhelming, not too strong of a taste, but it's kind of has it kind of has that vanilla, coconut, so yeah, coconut cream uh, flavoring. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not bad. I like it. So there you go, Boots Coconut Cream Soda from um, Ryan, Texas. Man, anyhow, enough of that. <laughs> uh, cheers, Aaron. Let's get right into this. This is actually a new one to the collection. I just picked this one up not too long ago. It's an original pressing. Phil Linett's first solo album. Solo in Soho. I believe it was 1979, 1980, somewhere in that area. Um, I gave this one a spin. It sounds good. It's, to be quite honest, it'll probably never get played again. It's more of a collector's item. When it comes to Thin Lizzy, Phil Linett, it's just certain bands. I'll, I'll collect anything that I can find from them. And, you know, this happens to be one of those bands. And... Yeah, very cool original pressing, Phil Line Solo and Soho. This is an original pressing as well. I've had this for years. Um, this is Exodus Pleasure of the Flesh with the original Cannibal uh, cartoon cover. Not in great shape. It plays okay. It's got a lot of noise to it, but I, I have a perfectly fine black vinyl version to play. So this is more of a, just a, again, a collector's thing. Uh, original band artwork pictures, limited edition of only 10,000. Oh, that's only 10,000? Couldn't even sell 10,000 records these days unless a limited edition pressing. Limited edition pressings are like 500 or 1,000 these days. So, uh, yeah, Pleasure of the Flesh, classic uh, second album from uh, Exodus. Uh, this ones are all... <laughs> oh, excuse me, soda. Uh, these are all um, Dio discs. This is a uh, 2002... Record Store Day pressing of Dio's uh, classic album, Killing the Dragon. I think this is a great album myself. And there it is, front and back. I have something to show them. Really, if, if the back's not sh able to be seen, I'm not going to pull these out because this will be an hour-long video. So um, This is Dio and Friends, Stand Up and Shout for Cancer. This is a, a uh, more of an EP. It's got, uh, what, Six songs, Straight to the Heart, Live by Dio, Rainbow in the Dark Live, uh, Neon Nights Live uh, on, the, on the B side. And then the A side has Neon Nights by Anthrax, Rainbow in the Dark uh, by, it's just a bunch of different guys, Corey Taylor and whatever, just a bunch of guys. Straight through the Heart, Hailstorm. So, 
Um, this is another, I believe this might have been a record store day as well, but I knew this was a, a fundraising thing to uh, raise money for cancer research. So I had no problem buying this, even though it's not something I'll spend a lot. It's a cool picture disc. got a great picture of Dio and whatever his little guy is in the background. I can't remember what his name is at the top of my head right now. Um, this one's really cool. I love this album. And <laughs> this one is still sealed, and I probably will never open it. Uh, and I'd like to get a, you know, a, just a regular vinyl version of it, but this is uh, Mystica, um, Dio's first and only, I think, under the Dio name, um, story album, you know, uh, concept album. When this came out, I listened to it over and over again, then it was announced that Dio was coming to town, uh, playing a small club, and on his tour he was going to be playing the entire Mystica album, so I devoured the album, just, I wanted to know it inside and out, so I... I just listened to it over and over again, and it wasn't like I was forcing myself to, I quite enjoyed it. Um, and when he played it live, it was just fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Um, it's unfortunate, uh, when the other band that I, that I opened up for them that I absolutely do love, uh, King's X, um, had a terrible show that night, but Dio was fantastic. Uh, limited to 500 copies, Record Store Day 2000. Wait, that's not Record Store Day 2000. This album was released in 2000. I'm not sure what record store day this was from, but it's one of those cool things, you know. It's uh, you know, people don't like record store day, but that Dio album was not available on any other format on vinyl, so it was cool to to grab that. Uh, this band is probably is not as well known as some of the others I'm showing. This is Anger is Art, fantastic thrash band from um, L.A. Um, and it features uh, what is his name? Let's see, it's slipping my mind at the moment. Daggum it. I hate when I can't remember something like that. Last name is Gaines. First name. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, anyhow, he played in Bloodlust and uh, I believe it was Avatar. Let's see if I can find it on here somewhere. Uh, of course not. Anyhow, Old Metal Records. <laughs> Anger is Art. Um, I gotta find a name where it's gonna drive me insane. Turn the camera on and become an idiot. Steve Gaines, um, who is the brother of Timothy Gaines, the striper, but Steve Gaines has um, never played in a band like that. He's always played in, you know, straightforward metal and thrash, speed metal bands, so very cool release from them. If you never heard Anger is Art and you like thrash metal, definitely check them out. Very good band from L.A., modern thrash band. Uh, excuse me, itchy nose. Um, this is an EP as well, or actually this is a 12-inch single, Anthrax, Black Lodge, four different versions of the same song. <laughs> Um, so again, not something I spin too often, but a cool picture. This guy picked this up really, really cheap back before, you know, vinyl was in vogue again. Um, and I've just had it ever since, so. The, uh, much hated by many people, John Bush era version of Anthrax. I like the John Bush era, so. Here's an original pressing of Anvil, Metal on Metal. From what would that be, 1983, was that when that was? Um, yeah, on Attic Records, Canada. Yeah, this has a white cardboard sleeve in it, and that's what was have been in it since I I've owned this thing for I don't know, 10, 20 years. It's, just, it's always been in this same plastic sleeve, and again, not one that I spin, just a collector's item. I'm a huge Anvil fan. I have a couple versions of Anvil on black vinyl, so no need to spin a picture disc. Just a cool looking collector's item. Ah, this one I should have showed earlier when I showed the first Phil Line. This is uh, Live in Sweden, 1983. Uh, I actually have this box set, CD box set of this, but I found this at a record show fairly inexpensively and of course had to snag it. Um, features a couple members that were actually in Thin Lizzy at the time. Um, man, I'm doing bad with names tonight, especially for a band like Thin Lizzy. Of course, I worked all day, so I'm tired. But uh, Darren Wharton on keyboards and the guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Played in White Snake. Funny, I can remember the band he played in, but I can't think of his freaking name. Um, played in uh, Tigers of Pantang. John Sykes. Yeah, I knew it would come to me. Live in Sweden. Really good sound quality. Cool record. Again, like I said, anything Phil Line it, Thin Lizzy related, I grab it. Um, this one I just picked up recently. Uh, it's still got a sticker on it. This is a 30, 30th edition picture disc, uh, 180 gram picture disc of Epicus Dumicus Metallicus. The price tag that was on there was on there when I purchased it um, and it came in the mail. I didn't pay that much for it. 
um, but still very cool. Someone that someone had to pay 32 bucks for it at one point. Uh, but this one hasn't even cracked open yet. Brand new, still in the packaging. So <laughs> I probably will crack this one open and give it a spin. I always like to check things out anyhow, just to make sure that you know they're good spinnable playing shape. Um, this one's cool. Scorpions, Lonesome Crow. This is a Rodney Matthews cover. Always love Rodney Matthews artwork. I actually like this better than any of the other covers for, for Lonesome Crow. Front and then the back. And again, I have a I have a black version of this, so I, I, I don't ever spin this one, but cool collectors did it nonetheless. Uh, Saxon, I have quite a few Saxon picture discs, so I just grabbed a handful of them. Um, I didn't grab most of the newer ones because people have seen those before. I thought this was a cool one though to show. I don't think I've ever seen anybody show this. This is the Heavy Metal Thunder picture disc. This was the when they went back and re-recorded classic tracks with the current lineup. Heavy Metal Thunder, Strong Arm and Law, Power and the Glory, and the bands played on Crusader, Princes of the Night, 747, Motorcycle Man, Never Surrender, Surrender, Denim and Leather, and Backs to the Wall. So yeah, this, it's just classic stuff on this picture disc. Uh, I, I love Saxon, so I'll buy anything by them. Again, one of those bands I collect anything I can find from, and uh, this is a cool one. Again, this one is actually, uh, I have this on, on CD, so this one's still sealed, and I don't think I'll probably ever open it. Again, I don't pay pictures of this all that often, um, so this one I'm keeping. And it looks like I paid uh, $17 for it because there's still a sticker on it. And I tell you the truth, I can't remember where I purchased it at, but I think I might have got it from a record show as well. Uh, here's some older ones. I actually brought the regular version of this one to show the regular. I have a couple black versions of this as well as the picture disc version of the classic Power of the Glory album. There is a difference in the track listings between these two. Um, let's see, one has Susie Hold On. This one has Susie Hold On. This is a U U.S. pressing on Career and this is a... Um, actually, I think they're both U.S. pressings on Career. I don't know, maybe this is a European pressing. But it doesn't have Susie Hold On on it. Instead it has... Uh, Midas Touch, I believe. Yeah, Midas Touch is the song on this one that's not on this version of it. So, there you go. Saxon. <laughs> Saxon. Um, unfortunately, picture discs aren't always right side up, so, you know, you have to turn them around. Uh, Power and the Glory from, what, 84, was it? 1980, I think it was 84. I could be wrong. I don't know. Don't matter what year it was. Um, this one's cool too. I didn't grab the black one on this picture. This and this, and this the uh, the regular version are exactly the same. But Innocence is no excuse. Uh, a lot of people didn't like this album. A little more melodic, a little less you know raw biker rock than the early stuff. But I've always liked this album. I think it's a fantastic album. Again, it could be just nostalgia for me because it's one of those albums I've owned since I was literally a little kid, um, and I played it over and over and over again. I always like the cover too. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. It doesn't really matter. It's just a Cool cover picture. Uh, this one's actually cool because it, it's a Stripe vs. Hell with the Devil. I have several versions of this as well. Again, I don't ever play this particular version of it. Um, the original came with a 24 by 36 inch promotional poster, which is still in here uh, and it'll never come out. My problem with posters and s stickers and stuff that come with an album is. They have to stay in the album for me. It's just <laughs> so I can't ever, you know, hang them up or use them unless I get a second copy or something. Uh, even then, it's, it just seems like it needs to be with the album. So, um, yeah, Tell the Devil, classic album from Striper, 1986, I believe it was, and uh, this was a limited edition too. I can't remember how many it was. Mine is number zero nine one zero. Probably one of those one of those ones that's limited to only thirty thousand copies. Uh, this is a little more obscure. I actually grabbed the album that most people might know from this band, but this is uh, this is Titan, classic U.S. power metal band from the '80s. Um, this is actually their second album. This is their first album. Uh, called the album is called Castle Donington Titan, and this is a picture disc. Uh, as I recall, it's the only way to get this album. Um, and it's oh, it's weird because let me see, I'm going to pull this one out because this one's a little unusual. This is an independent release from 1984. So here is the picture disc and then the back is autographed by the entire band um, to someone named Stacy so Stacy I have your record um, as you can see the whole band signed it uh, but this also comes with and any copy I've seen of this also has this which is this is the original cover art for it 
Here's the band photos in the back. So this is cool. I mean, I, I was really psyched to get this when I found it. I found it at a record show as well. It also came with this, which I thought was really cool. Just a bag of, <laughs> of stuff. So whoever Stacy was, apparently she knew the band really well. Um, there's backstage passes and a business card and flyers and some fo band photos, all that in here. Uh, and this little bag that came with it. Newsletter. So I just keep it with the with the album. I like stuff like that to begin with, but um, just a cool, a cool, very cool find, you know. So thanks, Stacy. <laughs> I'm really had, glad to have that in my collection. Like I said, just straightforward 1980s heavy metal, very good stuff. Um, speaking of Aaron, the metal theologian, I'd be shocked if he didn't have it in his collection because it's just a great album, and he's one that collects those, you know, a lot of those independent, unknown bands, and this happens to be one of those. Titan. Ah, uh, this one's cool. This is a more recent. Re this is a reissue of Vengeance Rising's 1988, 1989, or 88 classic, Human Sacrifice. This is the um, 300 pressing copy of this. They all came with a, a little card of authenticity. You can see right there. They're numbered. Might happen to be number two of 300. This was released on Rocks Records. I did do the artwork for this album. Um, I was sent by Pastor Bob Beeman, that's his hand in this picture, posing as you know, the hand of Christ, and uh, he sent me uh, a photograph that they used for the original, because the original is really poor, the, the reproduction is really poor, so I was able to get a much cleaner cover, and, but still hold that classic look. Um, the only thing is, is the hand was flopped on the, on the record, so I put it back the way it was supposed to be, and moved it. I had to move things around anyhow, because it was on a picture disc, and things would have been cut off. Because the original has the logo up here, so. Um, but yeah, I came out really nice. This thing's been sold out for years, and it's really hard to find. Um, very cool reproduction of the uh, first 1980, I think it's 88, Vengeance release. Uh, and that actually sounds better. I have the original black vinyl version on Intense Records, and that um, digital, that digital, that picture disc version sounds better than the original version. Um, and this is cool too, goes right along with it. This is actually the test pressing for that same album. I don't know how many test pressings were made. Um, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of between four and six. Um, but you can see the test pressing came with a sticker, uh, which actually says test press on it. And then the picture disc itself is just says test press all over it. It's only a test pressing I've ever seen of a picture disc. I'm sure there's others like Round that exist. That's just the only one I've ever seen or owned. This is a promotional release only. Ted Nugent's 1978, I believe it was, and these are ridiculously hard to find. You can see them, you see them on eBay every once in a while, but they're always overpriced. I'm sure Discogs has copies for sale too, and I'm sure they're overpriced as well. Uh, I picked this one up a long time ago, back before records were, you know, a normal record was twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm sure I, did, I paid way less than twenty dollars for this back then. Ten years in the state of shock. And finding pictures of bands like Molly Hatchet and um, Nugent and Aerosmith and stuff like that back then, not as easy as you think it is, um, because they were really that. Like that one was really just made for. I guess it was just sent to radio stations. So you don't send them when you do. They're all tore up, but they have radio station call letters written all over them. And that one is absolutely mint condition. Uh, well, Motorhead, Bastards, uh, I have several Motorhead, this is another one of those bands I'll collect anything by. I actually have two other vinyl versions of this on black vinyl, um, a US pressing and a European pressing. This is the picture disc version that was the only one that was available on on, uh, on CD for a while, I mean on CD, I can't speak to me. It's the only version that was available on vinyl for a long time, but it's recently been, been reissued. So uh, In the US I think it was actually called Death or Glory or something like that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is number um, 022 of 1000. So as you can see, the pressings in the, in the more recent ages have gone down. Limited edition pressing of 1000 worldwide is, is not very many for, just for a band like Motorhead. I used to have a, a couple other Motorhead pictures that I'd love to get back in my collection again, but it just hasn't happened yet. So I didn't actually pull out all the Motorhead. I just pulled out a couple. Um, this one here is actually the... Uh, Another record store they released. This is Aftershock. I bought this as a brand new release on black vinyl, and this is a picture disc that was released specifically for Record Store Day. And I, 
probably wouldn't have like gone out of my way to get this, but a good friend of mine went to Record Store Day and um, he picked it up for me. So there you go. There's the picture disc for Aftershock. Kind of nice that it comes in a full cover. You know, they don't have to come in full covers. I kind of like them if they do have like the the cutout cover at least because it protects them better than the the plastic sleeves, which is probably the most common way you see picture discs. But regardless. Uh, oh, another one of those promotional picture discs only. This is um, Molly Hatchet. Again, one of those bands you just don't find very often. Uh, and when you do, they're awful expensive. Um, this is No Guts, No Glory. I saw the band twice on this tour. Uh, I can tell you right now, they don't they didn't look like that <laughs> when I saw them. Great guys, though. I've got to meet several of these guys over the years, and most of them have passed away. But um, great band. I love Molly Hatchet, as you probably know. You've seen my videos. This is from, what, 1981, 1981. So there you go. See uh, Bruce Crump, he's passed away. Uh, let's see who else. There's um, Dave Flubeck, who has passed away. There is, um, who else is on here? Guitar, the other guitar player. Oh man, on space of names today, it's terrible. Especially names I know like inside and out. Like forgetting who's, who the singer of Aerosmith is or something ridiculous. Um, anyhow, he's also passed away in recent years. Um, Danny Joe Brown passed away too, but he's actually not the singer on this one. It's Jimmy Farrar who is pictured right there. I do you think it was Boris, uh, fantasy artist Boris, who painted this? Um, getting to the bottom here. I know this is going to be a long video, sorry. But this is what I'm talking about with the circle, you know, the cutout. Um, I prefer them to be like at least like that, just to have something to protect it. This is Primal Fear, German heavy metal, German heavy metal, power metal, whatever you want to call them. Great band. I love Primal Fear. Um, I think they're German. Nuclear Blast is German. Um, now I'm doubting myself. <laughs> Anyhow, this is uh, this is in a generic sleeve. These a uh, lot of the uh, Nuclear Blast picture discs were in these uh, same kind of sleeves. So I'm gonna pull this one out because it also comes in a plastic baggy, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, there's the front. There's the back. Uh, very much in the tradition of like uh, Judas Priest Painkiller, that style of just, you know, fast, furious, heavy metal, but you're going to get slower songs, you're going to get the ballads and everything else. Fantastic production on these things. The guitar tones are just out of this world brilliant. I don't remember why I don't drink soda, man. It gives me the perks. <laughs> so, yeah. Primal Fear. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Ah, Grave Digger, The Last Supper. Again, this is a full cover version. This is an interesting album uh, by this German power metal band. Um, what makes it interesting is that um, although these guys obviously aren't you know Christian or religious or or ministry kind of band um, what they tried to do was do a concept album based on the crucifixion and you know the whole story of Jesus Christ but from the from the perspective of what must have been going through you know his mind as he was being beaten and tortured and all those other sort of things uh, very interesting um, take on it you know whether you agree with him or not uh, but the artwork on this is just fantastic front and back. Of course, there's the Grave Digger uh, mascot in the background. Uh, I can't remember what year this was released. 2005. Yeah. I played this album when it first came out over and over and over again. And when I want to hear Grave Digger, I, this is one that I do return to quite often. So, very good album. Unfortunately, usually when I. Well, usually when I <laughs> um, want to hear that album, I go to the CD rather than play the picture disc. Uh, this is an old, old one I've had for a long time. On the Milan label, this is the best of Judas Priest. It's just a collection of uh, songs from the first two Judas Priest albums. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, there might be a version of uh, Diamonds and Rust on here too that was pre Sin After Sin. Let's see, it's got one of those white. I'm not sure how many of those came with those little white sleeves in the back. This one did. Uh, rock and Roller, Never Satisfied, Dying to Meet You, Diamonds and Rust. Yep, Diamonds and Rust. 
Victim of Changes, Allen of Domination, Deceiver, and The Ripper. So there you go, picture disc, Judas Priest, the best of. Um, got one more, and if I can get to one, I'm going to pull one. I just thought of another one I had. <laughs> this is a, a, a recent reissue, a release, not reissue, a recent release from Overkill, White Devil Armory. And um, I purchased this one not realizing it was a picture disc. It's actually a double picture disc. Um, I just actually thought it was black vinyl. And when it came in the mail and I, you know, popped out to play it, was shocked to find out so it's got, you know, the regular picture sleeves. But yeah, it's a picture disc. And both of them are. I know Maiden has a ton of reissues on a picture disc. I've heard they don't sound great. I'm not really interested in picking those up since I already have all the albums to begin with. So there's this two front and back. So anyhow, that was an accidental purchase, but I have played this one several times actually since it's the only version of vinyl I have, and it sounds fine. It doesn't have any of the people say that you know they have they have noise and all that kind of stuff, and it sounds pretty darn good to me. So I don't know. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I think modern picture discs sound a little better than the old um, 70s and 80s picture discs. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have. If I can get to one more, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab it and pick it out too. We'll see if it's, if it's easy to get to or not. So excuse me for a minute. I might cut it here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so I found it. This is uh, just one that popped into my head. I forgot all about. But this is one of my all-time favorite album covers by one of my all-time favorite metal bands, Serious Ungle. Um, this is their first album, Frost and Fire. Uh, and I've had this one for a long time. I don't know when this... See, this, uh, there's a re-release date on here. This was actually a re-release from 2005. Um, just before, you know, vinyl started hitting that big boom, I guess. Regardless, I was really happy to find this. Uh, again, one of those albums that I have on black vinyl, too, so it's not one that I, I play this thing, but I just it's just been always one of my favorite album covers. Um, and you're not really getting the full thing here. I'll pull this one out just because it's the last one. Oh, no, I won't. Holy cow, never mind. <laughs> the seal on that one's pretty tight. Like I said, it's never come out of here, so um, it's just been for, you know, a collector thing only. Uh, anyhow, that's it. Uh, I'm going to stop it here because I'm sure I've been rambling. So I uh, hope you dug it. I'd love to see other people show off what pictures they have. Um, I do like them, and so, yeah, if you do, let me know that you put it. I mean, I have a lot of you guys subscribe to you, so if you do a video, I'll probably find it, but... Um, you can always stick a link underneath or send me a link, you know, PM or on Facebook or whatever. But yeah, I'd love to see what other pictures other people have. So that's it. Appreciate y'all watching. God bless. Stay strong.